young by nature. I didn't ever realize how old my dad was until I was about 12 years old. You see, up until this point, my dad was active. He would always do so much things around the house. He was always walking around somewhere and always smiling and laughing. There's something about smiling and laughter that makes you younger, I think. The first day I met my dad, I can only imagine the joy he felt. Um, what a moment. <laughs> and what a blessing. It must have been for not just him, but I've realized for me. I didn't know it at the time, but I was being put into the hands of the most genuinely amazing man ever. God knew what he was doing when he gave me Peter Kwaku Tua as my father. I remember being small and wanting my dad to carry me all the time. I think at seven or eight, I was still trying to get carried. There was something about my dad's hugs and his arms and the way he held you that just made everything so much better. Even up until the time he passed away, I was always trying to get a hug from my dad. When my dad worked for Burberry, I used to wait for him on the bottom stair in front of the front door, waiting for him every day to come home. He would get there 6.30 p.m. on time, without, with, like never late, he was always there. And he would come to the door with his smart suit jacket on and his hat. He always had a hat. It was a gentleman's hat. And he would open the door, swoop low, swipe me into his arms and carry me to the living room. He'd place me on his knee and he'd play horsey with me. And he'd always give me a milky bar. I'm not sure if I was allowed it, but I didn't ask any questions. <laughs> he never moaned and he never complained. Even when he was tired, he was consistent and the same. He was there for us. He taught me how to ride my bike. He taught me how to, be, to, how to play football and be the best. And I'm really good. <laughs> Just saying. He'd say it all the time. He taught me how to win and how to lose gracefully. And the day I realized my dad was old, we were playing in the park and for the first time ever, I saw my dad tired. He wanted a break and sat down on the grass after I scored a wonder goal against him conveniently. There was something about that moment that I knew we wouldn't get to do this forever and he then turned and said to me, you and Daniel are ready to come to the park by yourself now. My dad was 80 years old at that time. He was still running around the park playing football with me at 80 years old. I'm 36, I'm struggling with my son. <laughs> God give me more grace. And my dad, um, so when I was growing up, I had a bit of an identity crisis. I didn't like my name Michael, I'll be honest. And I was looking for ways to make it cooler. And so I went and spoke to my dad about this. And I said to him, Dad, I don't like the fact that you call me Michael. You need to change my name. He looked at me puzzled. And uh, he said, what do you want me to call you? I said, I want you to call me Mac. M-A-C-K, Mac. At the time, there was a famous song that had in the charts called Return of the Mac. I don't know if it influenced me, but this is what I wanted to be called. And so my dad said to me, are you sure? I said, yes, dad, whatever happens, no matter what, always call me Mac, never change it. Even if I beg you to not call me Mac, call me Mac. He said, okay. One day, many years later, when I was in my teens, um, a few of my friends came around and my dad was calling me. And my dad was calling my name, but I didn't know he was calling my name. Because the way my dad pronounced his Mac is a Mac, he pronounces it Mark. <laughs> so, Mark, Mark, Mark. So my friend said to me, bro, your, your dad's calling someone Mark. Like, who is that? And I was like, I was quite embarrassed that my dad wasn't saying Mac. So I pretended that I didn't know who he was and, who, and that Mark was a next door neighbor. <laughs> and my dad spoke to me later saying, didn't you hear me calling you? I have so many good, incredible moments and memories of my dad and we could be here forever just talking about them. In life, I've always been driven to make the most of my life and to be the best and to leave something of significance behind and often at the cost of the ones I love and are closest to me. And a reflection of your life, dad, 
You have taught me something valuable that I knew in theory, but now know more deeply than ever. When it is all said and done, all you have is your family. The legacy we, live, we leave is bigger than accomplishments. It is about people, the people we leave behind, how we have prepared them and shaped them for the world that they have to navigate and make decisions, the impact that they can make on others that maybe we could never make. You have taught me how to love my son in the ways that you love me. I've learned how to be a better man in the increased time we spent together when I moved back home with you. Dad loved Jesus and he was, it was all Dad ever spoke about. And before he passed, we were all holding on to the hope and faith that he would recover. But my dad spoke to us and prepared us for what was to come. I won't go into detail about that, but thank you, Dad. Thank you for being obedient about what God was saying to you. I don't think I was the easiest kid to raise, and throughout the years I've done some bad things. But in every season and situation, Dad never changed with me. He never saw me different. He always loved me the same. He epitomized the grace of God to me in a way I never knew was possible, especially in the last five years. Thank you, Dad. As I bring this to a close, I just want to leave you with a few things that my dad wanted me to know and I think he wanted you to know. Though it is sad, it is not bad. Everything you do, you must be careful. Nothing is more powerful than grace. Grace can stop and absolve anything. God is enough. Family is all you have and all you need. Fight till the end. Trials are here to grow and develop you, not destroy you. Smile and laugh for the hardest of times, it will give you peace. The best is always ahead of you. Your thoughts are better spent on the things you can change, not the things you cannot. No one in the world is better than you. Anything God wants to do is good, even if it doesn't feel like it. Never give up. Leave it in God's hands. Worry about nothing and pray about everything. Give your best. Work hard. And finally, God will always work it out. I love you, Dad. This is a goodbye. This is see you later. about my dad. Um, there's a saying that the youngest child is always the favourite and um, I'm my dad's youngest and although he didn't have any favourites he loved all of us so much but when you were with my dad you always felt like you were his favourite. He made anyone who knew him feel so loved. Um, I remember telling someone on our road that um, my dad had passed away and their reaction was, oh, but he's my best friend. And I thought, wow, he made everyone feel like they were his best friend. And, you know, my dad loved every single one of us so, so deeply. Um, and although my dad had no favourites, um, me and him had a very, very special bond. Um, he wasn't just my dad, he was my hero, and he would always tell me that he was also my brother in Christ. My dad was such an amazing man, and I only got to have him for 33 years, but I thank God for every single moment I had with him. As Michael said, he was old, but you would never have guessed. He taught me to ride my first bike, and he was never too tired to take me to the park to play. My dad was one of the most selfless men, well, the most selfless man I'd ever met. Um, when I was younger, I would always wake up at um, 1 a.m. And um, I don't know, I just would always wake up every night, and I would go and knock on his door. And he would give me a piggyback downstairs and make me either Nesquik strawberry milkshake or Ovaltine, we went through, or Horlicks, 
or hot chocolate. We went through so many different phases. And um, then he would then put me back on his back and he would carry me back upstairs. Embarrassingly, the last time this happened was when I was probably about 13 years old. <laughs> I didn't realise yet a piggyback at 13 years old. And I never knew he was about 84 years old then at the time. Maybe if I did, I might have stopped asking him to carry me. But now, um, after what Michael has said, I assume the reason why he stopped playing football with Michael is because he was saving his energy for those 1am moments <laughs> to carry me up and down the stairs. You see, my dad loved Jesus and his love for the Lord was so contagious. When I was a teenager and I tried to go anywhere, I'd just be like, Dad, it was my friend's birthday. Before I would leave, he would ask me to come and sit down in his room and read him the Bible. And we would start with, the works of the flesh are. <laughs> and so by the time I had finished reading, I never wanted to go anywhere. <laughs> my dad did many great things in his life. He had so many achievements, but I never knew about any of them until he passed away. Because the only thing he would talk to me about is Jesus. He would only say, I'm, only, I'm where I am today because of the grace of God. One of the last things he said to me at home, he said, Paula, I am 104 and I have seen everything in this world. Nothing is good but God. When my dad was dying, the peace and joy of the Lord was so wonderful in that room. And I just remember thinking, it wasn't anything good that my dad did. There was not, it was no fact that, oh, he was such a good man of why we believed he was going to heaven. It was simply because he had placed his faith in Jesus Christ. And he'd say continually, it's all Jesus. It's all because of his grace. We know that my dad's going to be enjoying heaven. We know that he's worshipping with the Lord with every bit of energy and new strength that he's got. And we're so, so thankful. And I know my dad probably didn't want me to talk about him. The only thing he would have asked me to say is no Jesus. So I just want to encourage you, I know you're at a funeral, but if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, he is everything. He is everything. And as my dad said, in every moment of his life, he has seen the good, he has seen the bad, and all he wanted to know was Jesus Christ. And so I know, Dad, we will see you soon. And just the last thing I'll say really quickly is I prayed a prayer over a year ago, begging God, me and my husband were trying to buy a house. And thankfully, it all fell through. And it meant I got to move back in with my mom and dad for eight months. And my children got to know my dad, and it was the best moments ever. But I also just want to end just saying, Mom, thank you. Because in those eight months, I got to watch and how my dad would have his breakfast there. The carers would come and make that, but my mum would wait before they, he had finished his food before um, she went to work. Then she'd always rush back home to make sure there was always food on the table for him. And I genuinely believe one of the reasons why my dad was able to live so long was because of everything that my mum was able to do with him. So mum, on behalf of all of your children, Thank you so much. Dad would be so proud of you. I know it's, we're not where he may have wanted this funeral, but he would be so proud. And I just want to say on behalf of the family, Mom, we love you. Dad loved you. Sister and my dad absolutely adored you. Brother Yao, my dad loved you so much. Evelyn, Dad loved you with everything within him. Michael, Sean, Tiana, Elijah, and my three children, and Asha, Amelia, Charlotte, and Jenny. Dad loved us all so much. And as we celebrate his life, may we remember where he is and know that we will see him again. Thank you.
to you. My name is Michelle and I'm Auntie Lucy's niece and I'll be reading her tribute to her darling husband. God saw you getting tired and the cure was not meant to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me my son, my faithful servant. With tearful eyes, we watched you as you praised and worshiped God until you had your last breath. Though we love you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands laid to rest. Our hearts were broken on that early hour of the 8th of November. But once again, God proved to us only he takes the best at the right time. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you. The day God called you home, you left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide, and though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. In 1984, my dad and I went to a christening of a friend's daughter and met a man called Mr. Okoku who my father knew through working for Safe and Prosper Insurance. A day after, my dad received a phone call from Mr. Apoku asking my dad who the young lady with the party was. Dad told him, it is my daughter I came to the party with. This man was so anxious, he wanted his friend called Mr. Dua to meet me. He explained this man was not married, nor does he have a girlfriend. Dad agreed for them to come and visit us at my late cousin, Mr. Poku, and my Auntie Alice's house. After the initial meeting, Mr. Dura and I married three weeks later. I was young and my husband many years older than me, yet age did not matter to us. Our marriage was blessed for 38 years and six months, with children and grandchildren which we both cherished. 24th of May, 2023, would have been our 39th wedding anniversary. During our life together, my faith in Christ was strengthened by my husband. <coughs> he taught me how to forgive quickly and love deeply and not to hold any grudges against anyone. Although he was older in his years, he would still be the one to look after the house, do the gardening, change the light bulbs, and do all the handiwork. I even came home to find him painting the house last year at the age of 105. I feel lost without him. I loved him deeply and his loss in my life will forever be felt. He brought me countless memories of joy, laughter, love, and stability, <coughs> and I will forever be blessed to be the wife of Mr. Dua. I will always love you, your loving wife, Adwa. Be great. 
gracious to you, the Lord turned his face toward you.
I'm reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, 1 through to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Eternal Father, now is the hour. May your words comfort us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you go to the airport, there are so many things that happen. Some go to the airport and receive people who are coming. We are just arriving. You go to the right hand side. And when you see those people who are just about to leave, or those who are just departing to different places, some weep when they are seeing others off. They weep and weep, and you can't just believe. Why are they crying like that? That person is leaving them, is going to take a plane. Maybe he's living for good or he's living for a while. Yet, you see some people weeping. And when you go to the arrival side, you see some people jubilating, hugging each other, welcoming people, welcoming members, welcoming family people. Thank you, thank you, you are here. We long to see you. I just want us to know. In this world that we live, there is a departure and there is a arrival. There is a departure and there is a arrival. See, Jesus spoke about heaven and gave his followers four truths to trust <laughs> in him. Four truths to trust in him. You see, the last days have been very difficult for all of us, the family members, as that was departing. <laughs> At the came to a point there was a time when dad arrived in this country, there was joy. The disciples felt the same. You see, there was a week. And that week, they have begun gloriously with Jesus. When he walked in Jerusalem, triumphantly. That triumphant entry into Jerusalem. With people waving palm branches and little did they know Christ would. Be with them much longer. Later did they know that Christ is just about to leave them. They were upset. So Jesus looked at them and said in verse 1 of John Gospel chapter 14. He looked at them intently and said, Don't let your heart be troubled. Yes, today is a celebration day. We are mourning, we are weeping, we are thinking about how the good life that you lead with us. But as Jesus was also looking at the disciples, they were all upset, they couldn't know what to say. Jesus looked at them and said, I just want to tell you, don't let your heart be troubled. Not Lucy. Sister Paula, Brother Michael, the whole family, don't let your heart be troubled. In the second half of the verse, 
Jesus makes another claim to the deity. He said, believe in God. Believe also in me. Even though I will be leaving you for a while, yet still love to trust in Christ. And that's the same thing that he also told you. I believe in you. Definitely, I have to go. But there's no other person to believe or to trust than Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus, you have everything. What a promise that he has given to us. What a joy. Later, he said in verse 27 of the same chapter, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. He said, do not let your heart be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So, brothers and sisters, the first thing Jesus tells us is to trust in him. And when we do, he will give us his peace. That's the first truth. My peace I give to you. This peace is not the peace that comes from the world. The same thing when he just appeared in the presence of the disciples. He told them, Peace I leave you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. So the first truth is his peace. The next, he tells us to focus on another place. So in verse 2 and 3, in my father's house are many rooms, if it were not so. In my father's house are many rooms. Believers, we are sure that there is a place where all wrongs will be made right and imbalances will be straightened out. There is a place. You see, as custom demands in the ancient Far East, <clears throat> one cent ahead, normally when there is going to be a gathering, one is sent ahead to find lodging and make arrangements for travelers. These days, you cannot use Google Maps during that time. <laughs> Friends, Jesus has gone before us to prepare a place for us in heaven. All the arrangements have been made for those who have put their full faith and trust in him. It is interesting that Jesus has prepared a room for us, even though there was no room for him when he was on this earth. But he has gone to prepare a place for us. Wow. There was no room for him when he was born. No room. We all know where he was born. No room. Yet he's saying that. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe. For I'm going to prepare a place. First, don't forget <coughs> to trust in the peace of Jesus. Yes. No other person can give us peace. Secondly, don't, don't let us look straight that this place is our home. There is a special place prepared for us. So the third thing, we are called to trust his peace and to recognize that he is preparing a place. And the third thing is, <laughs> the third thing where we are to do is to trust the promise of Jesus. The promise of Jesus. So in verse 3b, to his followers in verse 3, he said, I will come and take you to be with me. Not to show you the place or give you a map or ways. I promise to come back. I'm not giving you the ways to look for where the place is so that the ways will tell you, turn right, turn left, uh, at the roundabout, take the fifth exit. No! I am going to prepare the place for you. Not to show you the place or give you a map always. I promise to come back and take you to the place 
so that we can be together forever. Amen and amen. 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 Oh, wow. Then we will finally be home. We will finally be home. The Bible is full of promises. Psalm 145, verse 13. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. Please let us know that God wants us to trust this truth, the truth of his peace, the truth of the place that he has prepared for us, the truth of the promise that he will come back again. What a promise! I will come back. Do you believe that? Yeah. I will come back. So note, friends, let's trust his peace. Let's focus on the right place. Let's claim his promises. And finally, the last one, let's commit to follow his plan. Yeah. Only his plan. So if you, verse 4 to 6, if you just get in your car and just drove east, you can just go. It is so easy in life to just start driving without any sense of where we are headed. You go nowhere if you don't know where you're going. You go nowhere. Taking a trip, you better have a plan where you are going. And when we started all the way from Postmouth, we knew we were coming here. And we are here. Wherever you also started your journey, the, the plan was you were coming here and you were here. One of the disciples named Thomas spoke up for the rest of the timid team. Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Hey, we don't know. In verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the life, I am the truth. No one come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. There is no other plan but the person of Jesus. His plan is the best. No way to heaven unless through him. No way to heaven unless through Jesus Christ. Salvation is formed in no man. Found in no man. Acts 4.12 For well, there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. To reiterate what I've just said, let us believe the truth of his peace. Of the place he has prepared for us. Of his promise. And of his plan. Only Christ's plan. You can move north, east, and west going to heaven. Without Jesus, you can't go anywhere. With Jesus, who is the way? Who is the truth? Who is the life? You will enter into this rest. Daddy, we've heard a lot about him. What a kind person. What a lovely person. What a lifeless person. What someone who, who has given all and all, not only to his family, but to all and sundry. Indeed, we need to celebrate. 104 years is more bonus than the Lord had given to daddy. We went to the hospital. I saw Mom Lucy with two pastors and our wife. And when we went there, daddy saw us and mommy introduced us to him. These are the pastors. And then he said, hallelujah, now I've seen my pastors. If I go today, I give praise to the Lord. Oh, what a joy. And I said, what a faith. What a faith. John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. Period. But the wrath of God remains on him. Do you have the son? Do you believe the son? This man who is here, he knew no other person than J-E-S-U-S. -E, he lived his life to into to his Jesus. 
He's left that Jesus to you, Paula, Mikey, Lucy. So wherever Daddy told you that look unto that man alone, never look on the right or on the left. Please continue to be steadfast to Jesus. All people here, if you have Jesus, you have everything. Allow Jesus to give you his peace. Hold on to his promises. Focus on another place. And commit to follow his plan. Heaven is a prepared place of peace. Promise to prepare people who partake of his plan. In Samuel, 1 Samuel 23, David said, Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. There's only a step. As you move, in between your steps, in between you and death. So whatever you do, <coughs> anything can happen. We all see what has just happened in Turkey and Syria. Within a trickle of an eye, 4 a.m., people are way asleep. Between these steps, there is death. From the sports stadium, back home, there is death. Even to the bathroom, there is death. Even as we sit here, when we make a step, there is death. And that's what David is saying. There is between me, yet as surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. Fellow believers, family members, don't put off a decision to follow Christ. Never put it off. Decide today to give your life to Jesus. Because that is what Daddy is saying to all of us. Jesus and Jesus alone. Please, don't let your heart be thrown on you. Believe in Jesus. Believe also in God. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to where I am. There ye may be also. For peace, don't forget as we live here, the peace of God. A place prepared for us. The promises Jesus has given us and the plan to follow to Jesus. May the Lord bless us and strengthen you as you put your faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. Once you were somewhere, but now Jesus is your Lord and your everything. Daddy was a seven-day Adventist, strange seven-day Adventist member. I just want you to know, the doors are always open. <laughs> Paul, I just want you to know, that's why Daddy left. Lucy, I just want you to know, the doors are always open. You are all welcome every blessed day, hour and minute. The Lord will strengthen you and keep you. In Jesus' name, Amen. I would like to pray for the family. So if you wouldn't mind, the family members, please, if you can stand and just walk a little bit front as we commit myself to the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. My pastor, see if you can join me here. Blessed of God.
excellent is thy name yes. in all the earth. Father of all mankind, you created us and breathed in our nostrils before we became a living soul. Yes. Hallelujah. There's none beside you. When we are sick, we come to you. When we are joyful, we come to you. When we are bereaved, we still cry upon you. At this time, Father, you know what is going on at this very hour. Hear your people stand. Hear the family members stand who are bereaved, crying, weeping, but yet celebrating because you have made it possible for our dad to live 104 good years on this earth. Father, please, today you have strengthened the family. Yes. That don't ever let your heart be troubled. That tells me, coming from your own mouth, tells me that you are the only person who can strengthen. You are the only person who can give peace. You are the only person who can show us the way. You are the only person who can promise and then your promises will be sure. And you are the only person who we have to look on your plan. So Father, into the hands, into this hand, I commit this family. Please. Draw closer to the family. Thank you. Wipe away all tears. Strengthen them the more. Because when you have Jesus, you have everything. He said, Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. So it's my prayer that as you walk on this sensitive world, continue to put all your trust and faith in Jesus. Because he is the resurrection and life. Anyone who believeth in me, even though he is dead, yet shall he live. Now I say this prayer that now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you. As ministers here, we lift our hands upon all the family here. Father, please bless this family. Console this family. Wipe away this family. And grant them the peace that they need. I've asked all this. In Jesus' name and for his sake, let us all respond. Amen. 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 Cemetery, the roadway is in the way, so I've asked the funeral director to come and tell us how to get there. When we finish, we'll do the closing prayer. Once we've done that one, the uh, steward will be playing for us and we'll do the viewing. The family will be do last, so we'll come and view and then we'll go straight to our cars, those going to the cemetery. We'll head there. So, then you can tell us directions to the cemetery, please. Where are we going to? Yeah, we're going to uh, Forest Park Cemetery. Yeah, um, if you want to follow the cortege, just um, follow your cortege. We're going to head to the 812 towards Rockford. Uh, and we're going to come up at the Moby Dick pub, which is on the right hand side. We're going to turn left there up to Forest Park. We're going to try and avoid the back route because there is roadworks near Forest Park. It's causing a lot of traffic. So if you want to follow us, uh, that would be the best way for you. Okay? Uh, before we go, I just want to repeat an announcement. I'm sure the family is gathering again on Saturday. What time? Saturday, 6 p.m. What address? Frederick Primary School. Where is that? 
Welcome so okay please. So if you need further directions, please speak to Paula or Michael or Miss Hamden. It's on the leaflet as well. Okay, very good. So we'd we'll love to see as many as possible to be there. Okay, please let's rise for the benediction. Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. We commit the family once again into your hands. Be their rock. Be their foundation. And all the madness who come here as we go to the cemetery, take us there safely or wherever we're going to. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Give you condolence. Give you comfort. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go from this direction. Please be seated. Okay. Yeah, he'll play for us and we'll start from the back. And we'll come around this way. And then through this way. When we finish, those at the back here, so you can follow. We'll go this way. We we'll start from the back. Those there, just follow them right around and go this way. So I will end with the front ruler. So the back, you go first, you cross over and join. The next way you go, you cross over and join. And we'll keep going that way.
we are now at the cemetery for the interment of Openi Peter Kwekudria in Haynot. It's been a long drive.
we are waiting later to our views. We waited for one of the songs before and, uh, the casket is lowered. So please stay tuned. Thank you. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am that living and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. You follow them. Now you can lower the breath. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also who sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, Father, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. We we'll invite Reverend Henry Buffalo to give us a word. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this ceremony before your care. We ask Spirit of God to come and help us as we commit the mortal remains of our dear dad unto you. We commit the occasion, let everything be done according to the world, and in the end, we will give you the praise for that which you have done. We want to thank you, we want to bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll sing, How Great Is Our God. Um, sing with me, How Great Is Our God. For as much as it have pleased Almighty God in His love and wisdom to permit our dear father, our uncle, our granddad, our church member, Opani Peter Dia, to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit his body to the ground. F to F, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his glorious appearing shall change the body of our humiliation, that it may be made like unto the body of his glory according to the mighty working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things has passed away. Amen. 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 Let's pray. The last time, you were in the world. Have you know your 
So, ladies and gentlemen, before we put the soil into the ground, we'll do the doves first, uh, and then we'll place the soil. Okay. Then we'll cover it before. Okay. Then, then we need to pray. Then let's 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 have a last word of prayer. Let's have the word first. Eternal Father, we commit this place into your mighty hands. Mark this very place. Amen. Till the D day mm. that you will just resurrect your people mm. from the grave. Mm. And may we hear our dad's name. Mm. As you called Lazarus' name, mm. may he also hear his name. Mm. The Lord bless us all mm. and keep us. Mm. In Jesus' name mm. have I prayed. Amen. 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 So we also okay. want to say that on behalf of the Bertinasi family of Ghana, we want to say, Uncle, uh, goodbye to you. Uh, when you go, greet all the family members, especially your mother, Nana Amade Achempim, your brother, Nana Kwame Akuwa, and all your sisters and other people who are also there with you. God bless you for what you did. And like we have said, your legacy still remains. Amen. 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 Um, um, we'll do the vote of thanks. Or one to finish that. Okay. That's all right. Oh, you're not true. I want to do a very careful. Okay. Sorry. Okay. 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 They're no, professional, that. Uh, yeah. They're gentle. If you don't need to hold them tight, they just look. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm letting go when it's short. Yeah. If Sean does hold it, then I'll hold it. Uh, Sit. Not too tight, though, because they 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go. That's it. Like I said, perfect. Out there, stop the winds. Give me one. Yo, yo. Okay, there's only five. Is it with Yeah, I got it. I can tell you, yeah. Yo, 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 take it. Yo, but so much. Who's one? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is ladies and gentlemen. To represent Peter's spirit, soaring free and at peace. Mm -hmm. Now send your love mm -hmm. on the wings of the dark. Okay, now they'll all stay together. Right. 